Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Hello guys, welcome to Fusion Mobile e-learning class and in this video we are going to be talking about civic education. Particularly we are going to be looking at values. We will be looking at the meaning of value, we will be looking at the kinds of values we have, we will be looking at the types of value. Yes, there's a difference between kinds of value and types of value. And then finally, finally, we are going to look at involvement in community service and see what that is all about and also bring some instances. So let's go straight to the point. But before I talk about value, let me just uh, ensure that, okay, you, I, I, I want to believe from the previous videos that you've watched, you already be, you basically have a clear idea what civic education is all about. But still, let me do you know when we're talking about civic we are talking about duties expectations and you know the the, the 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 duties and practice of people in relation to their place their town or their area civic education is basically education about people and how they are integrated into their society how they act with each other interaction and everything these are all civic education but then again if you look at the previous videos, you have a clearer view of what uh, civic education. I'm just trying to maybe remind you or take you back there. So let's talk about values. Now, when we're talking about values, basically, what we are talking about is values are used to measure the worthiness or worthlessness of something. When something is very important to us, we say that thing is valuable. When something is not important, we don't give any significance to it. We say that that thing does not have any value. Now, value can be attached to people or even things. Like our parents, they are valuable to us. Our teachers are valuable to us. Our friends, our family, our colleagues. These are people and they are valuable to us. Now, when we talk about things, gold, houses, lands all these are things but then again we consider them as valuable things because we see them as very important things in our life now value can also be attached to our likes and dislikes we're talking about values that is attached to our likes we are talking about truthfulness truthfulness is an intrinsic value i'm going to explain what that uh, kind of value is later but then we're talking about selflessness, love, justice. All these are likes. Now, when we talk about dislikes, you're talking about like cultism, lies, um, okay, truthfulness, and then dishonest people. All these are attached to value, but these are values that we don't like. When someone is dishonest, it's a value, but this is not a value that we like. I know that you don't like a dishonest person, or do you? So now that we've seen what value, or now that I've told you what value basically means, now let us look at the kinds of value we have. Basically, we have two kinds of value. We have the intrinsic value, and then we have the extrinsic value. These are basically the two kinds of value, not types, kinds of value we have. We have the intrinsic value and then we have the extrinsic value. Now, when we're talking about the intrinsic value, basically these are values that are internalized. These are internalized ideas, norms that we have. When you talk about love, when you talk about selflessness, when you talk about obedience these are all internalized values these are values that come from within naturally and we acquire these values through our family through school by being taught by these values are instilled inside of us by our family by the school institution and their likes so these are basically intrinsic values and now when we talk about extrinsic values now, because I said um, intrinsic values are values that are internalized, and you want to say, okay, the extrinsic value because I have EX here is the opposite. No, okay, it's somehow like that. But when you talk about extrinsic value, you're talking about mediums by which we acquire intrinsic value. Extrinsic values are values also, but then again, this could be people, 
or books that serve as medium by which we acquire this intrinsic value. Take for instance your teacher, or take for instance me now, that I'm talking to you about civic education. Now all the knowledge that you are going to acquire, and then this knowledge are instilled in you, and you get to know, these are intrinsic value because they go inside of you and then you know this knowledge within you. But me being the teacher, telling you about this knowledge, giving you this knowledge, now I fall under extrinsic value. Because I am now a platform, I am now, I'm now a medium by which you acquire intrinsic value. If you hold a textbook, like a civic education textbook for instance, the knowledge you acquire from the textbook, these are intrinsic values. But then the textbook itself is an extrinsic value because it serves as a platform, as a channel where you acquire intrinsic value. Now let us move to the types of value that we have. Basically, we are going to concentrate on three types of value. In the previous video, we did talk about some types of value. Now we are going to concentrate on three types of value. We are going to concentrate on, okay, let me clean this. We are going to concentrate on honesty, justice, and selflessness. These are the three types of value that we are going to concentrate on. We are going to concentrate on honesty, justice, and selflessness. But then tradition demands before I continue, or before I get into these types of value, as always, some questions are going to pop up on your screen right now, and I am confident that you are going to answer them with ease. So here's the question. Welcome back from that question, and I hope you answered that correctly. Now, before that question popped up, we are talking about the types of value that we are going to look at in this video. And I mentioned that we are going to talk about honesty as a type of value. We are going to talk about justice. And then we are going to talk about selflessness. Honesty, justice, and selflessness. So let's pick the first one, which is honesty. Now, when we say honesty as a value, what are we trying to talk about? When we say someone is honest, this is an honest person. Basically, what is the idea that they are trying to establish? An honest person is someone who is straightforward, is someone who is truthful, is someone who is respectable, is someone who is responsible. All these are traits of honesty. When you point at someone and say that person is an honest person, you are trying to say that person is principled. That person does not go against the truth. If he knows that this is the truth, he stands by, that, by it. He does not let sentiment cloud his judgment. When he believes in something and he knows that that thing is the truth, he sticks with it. Basically, that is what honesty means. The ability to tell the truth, the ability to be responsible, the ability to be respected. Because if you are honest, a lot of people are going to respect you. Even if they don't like you, they don't have any option than to respect you because you are God-fearing also. An honest person is God-fearing. So basically that is what honesty means. Now let's look at some features of honesty, traits of honesty, characteristics of honesty, whichever one works for you. So some of the features of honesty include number one, being committed to duty and the task set before a person. Number two, showing uncompromising support for justice and truth. Number three, being trustworthy, which brings that person dignity and integrity. Number four, living a disciplined life, which shows in that person being reliable and dependable. Number five, being bold and courageous to defend the truth and condemn permissive living. All these are traits, all these are features, all these are characteristics 
of honesty or an honest person he condemns a permissive living he condemns lies and he is always truthful all these are characteristics of an honest person now since we've seen the futures we've heard about the characteristics or traits of an honest person what are the benefits if you are honest what is the benefit why should you convince someone you should be honest if you are honest what are the things that you are expected to see or to even feel the following are some of the benefits of honesty number one it leads to economic social and political advancement number two honesty promotes justice and fair play among individual members of the society number three Honesty removes fear, bitterness, and acrimony in the social, political, and economic circumstances of life. Number four, honesty attracts patronage and good work to the individual and society. And then number five, honesty has solicited defenders, sorry, honesty has unsolicited defenders, protectors, admirers, and lovers. All these are benefits of honesty what is the opposite of honesty of course it's dishonesty when someone is not honest we say that person is dishonest and when someone is dishonest that person tells lie all the time the person is not trustworthy the person is not truthful the person is not respected in society that person is not responsible these are when they talk about dishonesty these are what they're talking about when someone is dishonest or someone is considered to be dishonest basically this is what they mean he's not trustworthy he's not truthful he lies too much he's not dependable he's not reliable this is a dishonest person and of course there are consequences for dishonesty when someone is dishonest there are consequences take for instance a nation like nigeria is full with dishonest people what do you think is going to happen of course, one of the consequences is going to be chaos everywhere because people are not going to abide by the rules and regulations governing the country. There's going to be chaos everywhere. There's going to be um, sentiment everywhere. There's going to uh, be, how should I put it? There would not be justice in the society. Why? Because people are no longer honest. It's only an honest person that's truthful. So if someone is dis dis uh, dishonest, he does not care about the rule of law. He does not care about justice. All he cares about is how he can benefit from something. So all these are some of the consequences of dishonesty in a society. Breakdown of law and, or, uh, ruler, uh, law and order, chaos, mismanagement of funds, public fund. All these are consequences of dishonesty. So now since we've looked at honesty, we've seen the benefits of honesty, we've seen the futures, characteristics or traits of honesty, now let us move to the next value that we are going to be looking at, the next type of value that we are going to be looking at, and that is justice. Now of course I know once or twice you've heard someone say, let justice be served. Maybe you've heard about jungle justice. You've heard about okay this 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 is judicial justice this is legal justice this you've always heard about justice 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 now justice is a type of value in most in most cases it is regarded as social justice and basically what is social justice social justice is saying that we are all equal and should be treated equally if you are giving a this then you should give b this if you are treating A like this, then you should treat B like this. So justice is basically talking about the situation where sanctions are given accordingly, where rewards are given accordingly to people who deserve them. When someone does something wrong, then that person should be punished accordingly. That is justice. When someone does something right, then that person should be rewarded accordingly. That is justice. Now, there are a lot, a lot, when I'm talking about the types of justice, there are a lot of them. And right now, I'm going to start listing them out and briefly explaining what each one means 
So when I see out a type of justice, of course you're going to see it on the screen, you'll see the type, and then the brief explanation is just going to appear under it. So you read it yourself so that it will stick to your brain. So now let's get to know the types of justice that we have. Number one, we have the personal justice. And this is that branch of justice which regulates and balances the free power of man and how he uses his power. It is justice in the sense of personal integrity and moral standards. Personal justice is justice in the terms of integrity and moral standards. Number two, we have the commutative justice. Sorry, This is another branch or type of justice and this is the strictest strictest branch of justice which regulates the contractual relationship exchange business and commercial activities among individuals or between one community or company with another when you hear two or you see two companies two communities having a contract an agreement so this type of justice the commutative justice is basically justice that has to do with the contract uh, contract agreement between communities and companies between them so it's very strict it's not flexible it's very strict because anything this this community have to reach an agreement and then when one party falls short of the agreement when one party does not meet up with the expectation of the agreement then there's big problem there and the other party can take legal actions so now let's move to the next type of justice we have we have the legal justice. This is the special type of justice which obliges those with legislative power to ensure justice and the achievement of the common good in society through the enactment of laws that are fair, honest, and just, and morally possible to be observed. Legal justice is all about the legislative, those who are making the laws, that should, they should make reasonable laws, laws that can be observed in a society. You look at the society and you look at the laws that you actually make and you ensure that these laws that you are making, these laws that you are bringing out are observ observable in this society. That's what legal justice means. Now let's move to the next type of justice. We have the judicial justice. This refers to the equitable dispensation of justice by the body of lawyers, magistrates, judges and other justice, justices of law who have responsibility for the dispens dispensation of justice justice that is what judicial justice basically means justice by a group of lawyer judges magistrates of court all this has to do with judicial justice now let's take um two more type of justice we have the retributive justice this is a type of justice which constitutes the foundation of penal law and demands that infringed right order and order be met by reparation or punitive measures these are justices that are put in place when you infringe someone's right it demands that you actually correct that especially when it affects human right also these are justices that are justice rather they are put in place to correct when there's infringement of someone's right you are not allowed to do something that you actually have the right to do these justices are put in place laws are put in place to correct that and ensure that all these are corrected so now the last justice we are going to look at is the social justice if you remember earlier I said social justice is basically looking at okay we are all equal and should be treated equally social justice is basically talking about the equality of mankind we are all equal and should be treated equally that's basically what social justice is talking about Now, that's the last type of justice that we are going to look at. That's the last type of justice that we are going to look at. Now, let us move to the last type of value that we have. And the last one is selflessness. Selflessness is a type of value. And when they say selflessness, what are they talking about? They are talking about a situation where you begin to consider the happiness of others over your own happiness the well-being of others over your own well-being when they say someone is selfless they're trying to tell you that that person cares about the people around him more than he cares about himself 
he is willing to help the people around him even if that help is going to be detrimental to him even if that help is at a cost a great cost to him he doesn't mind because he's selfless he's not selfish he does not think about himself as much as he thinks about others in the society that is basically the what we mean by selflessness is a situation where someone cares about his neighbors his family more than he cares about himself now what are the qualities of selflessness of course since we are talking about a situation where someone cares about the people around him more than he cares about himself there are certain qualities and the following are some of the qualities of selflessness number one it does not seek for self-indulgence or self-satisfaction but of what will benefit all number two there is high degree of love for society and all that dwell in it number three selflessness help to improve greed sorry selflessness help to remove greed selfishness bitterness and rancor in the minds of the people and society at large and then lastly selflessness pours in people the spirit of patriotism which is necessary for the sustainable growth and development of human and material resources in any given society all these are qualities of selflessness when we say someone is selfless all these qualities that we have mentioned are qualities of selflessness now let us look at why do we need selflessness in our society what is the need for us or why why do we need people to think about the benefit of the society at large more than their personal benefit the following are some of the reasons why we need selflessness in our society number one it brings about respect for human dignity it brings about respect for human dignity number two it brings about honesty loyalty and pride number three it brings about social solidarity and communal interest number four the maintenance of public order and peace number five respect for constituted authority and then number six rejection of corrupt practices number seven our people will be saved from greedy politicians and political god fatherism all these are what we stand to benefit when we inculcate selflessness in our daily life or in our minds as a very very strong value these qualities when we say the society is a self the people in a society are selfless people there's room for improvement there's room for development why because they are not just thinking about themselves they are not just thinking about okay what am i going to do to just get money in my pocket or fill my bank account with lots of money no what they are thinking about is how can my society grow how can my society be better how can my society develop not just me individually no how can the society at large grow how can it develop how can we get better that is how selfless people think and we all should be selfless in school in the family and all when we have something and we can share with our neighbor we should share it that is selflessness basically so now it if you look at the explanation that i have made you realize that there's some sort of relationship between justice and selflessness for you to get justice those people who are enacting it stakeholders those people who are to ensure that justice is served have to be selfless because if they are not selfless if they are just thinking about what am i going to benefit if i serve justice if i ensure that justice is served what am i going to benefit those people who let sentiment cloud their judgment but then when they are selfless when they are not just thinking about themselves when they are not thinking about their benefit when they are thinking about okay how can this decision that i'm about to make how can this verdict that i'm about to pass affect the society generally and that is when you have genuine justice that's when you have true justice because it is not influenced by sentiments no but it's influenced by objectivity and truthfulness so selflessness brings about justice in any given society now in the beginning of the video we looked at 
values and we looked at the meaning of values and then we talked about um, the kinds of value where we talked about the intrinsic value and the extrinsic value and now we've talked about the types of values we have where we mentioned honesty we mentioned justice and we mentioned selflessness now let us look at the last item here that's going to feature in this particular video involvement in community service what we talk about community service what is the first thing that comes to mind obviously from the two words here community and service we just say service to community when you actively participate in communal service when you actively participate in any project that involves your community for the greater good of the community that is community service basically it's a situation where people living in a particular community come together to work together put their heads together to develop their society engage in a project that brings about development brings about growth in that society that's basically what community service is talking about so now how do we involve ourselves in community service how do we engage in community service we can engage in community service either via the family our age group and even at national level we can engage us in family age group and even the national level so if you're thinking how can we do this via family family actually does a lot when we're talking about community service because it has to do with interaction 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 so let me just list out as it relates to family how we can involve in community service number one The family performs the services of organizing members for community development projects through self-help. Number two, the family helps to bring her members together when any of her members dies. Of course, when we're talking about burial ceremonies and all like that, the family brings people together. And that's community service because you're doing something for the community. It's unfortunate the situation, we're talking about death. But still it's community service. We want to talk about digging the grave. We want to talk about taking the casket and all. It's all part of community service. Now, let's look at each group. How each group serves or involves us in community service. Now, these are the ways. Number one, they help in the implementation of laws made by the Council of Elders or yeah, okay, they help in the implementation of laws made by the Council of Elders. Number two, they help in protection of life and property of the inhabitants of the area. Number three, organizing local labor force for the cultivation of food and cash crop. Number four, uh, other functions of each uh, groups or grades, if you may, include checking of each other's behavior and actions. Number, uh, let me take the last one. Also, they run errand or summoning the council of elders or the title holders to meet in cases of murder as on stealing or breaking of taboo basically in emergency cases all these are functions that the age group play to involve us in community service bring the elders together check their own behavior that's why you hear about vigilantes in certain areas or in certain communities these are age group these are young people who are basically in the same age bracket come together and then they form a vigilante group to do uh, to, to, to serve their community to check behavior in the community to check how many uh, people are deviating from the norms and values of the community so all these are functions of the age group or in involving us in community service now let's talk about the last one which is at national level how we can get involved in community service at national level the best instance I can think about is the NYSC scheme the best instance I can think about is the NYC scheme, that's the National Youth Service Corps. You know, it was created in 1973 by the Yakubu Gawan administration after the Civil War. Why? To foster integration, to foster unity between different ethnic groups in Nigeria. 
if you observe, I don't know if you have a comment in your family, but if you, are, if you observe, they pick people and they send them to communities of different, who, who, that, should I say, okay, a, a different community entirely who speak different language, different tribe. Why? Simply because they are trying to bring him in a new community and they are trying to make him serve that community as an outsider. Why? To foster good relationship, understanding. So that's how we can involve in community service at national level. I hope what we have been saying so far, what I have been saying so far, has been very, very useful to you. Remember, at any time when you get confused and you don't understand something or you didn't hear it, you can go back to the beginning of the video and watch it all over again. That is too much that we can take or we are going to talk about value in this particular video some questions as always you know some questions are going to pop on your screen right now just to ensure that you have been listening and you have learned one thing or two so some questions are going to pop up right now uh till i see you in the next video i still remain abubakar abdo bye bye for now